we saw in the last video that we can use contraceptives to reduce fertility and prevent pregnancy. Some women though have the opposite problem. For example, they may be naturally infertile, but want to have a baby. So in this video, we'll look at how we can increase their fertility using hormones, see how IVF works, and consider its pros and cons. If you remember from the menstrual cycle, FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone, and it stimulates the ovaries of a woman to mature an egg. However, some women have low levels of FSH, which means that their egg won't mature properly. To fix this, we can give them FSH in the form of a pill to help their eggs mature, and then give LH, which is a luteinizing hormone, to stimulate ovulation which remember is the release of that egg and normally happens on day 14 of the menstrual cycle. Most of the time, this is all that it takes to restore fertility and the woman can go on to get pregnant naturally. If this doesn't work though, then the woman may choose to try IVF, which stands for in vitro fertilization. If you haven't heard of in vitro before, it just means outside the body for example in a test tube in a laboratory. Whereas in vivo is the opposite, and means inside the body. Getting back to IVF though, there are kind of five different stages. First, women are given FSH and LH to stimulate some of their eggs to mature, like we said a minute ago. Next, the eggs are collected from the woman's ovaries and fertilized by sperm from the father. This is all done in a laboratory, and if the man has a low sperm count, then doctors could use a technique called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI, where the sperm is injected into the egg cell with a super tiny needle. Now that the eggs are fertilized, they're placed in an incubator and left there to grow into embryos, which are tiny balls of cells. A little while later, one or more of these embryos will be taken out and inserted into the mother's uterus. And that's it. The embryo should go on to grow into a fetus. So what about the pros and cons? Well, the pro is that it can allow infertile couples to have kids, which is pretty great. A big con, though, is that it doesn't always work. For example, in the UK, the chance of success is just one in four. And this is made worse by the fact that it can be stressful, emotionally upsetting, and physically unpleasant. For example, a lot of women get abdominal pain and vomiting. Another downside is that because we often put multiple embryos into the uterus, in the hope of at least one of them developing, IVF often leads to multiple births by which we mean twins or triplets. And just like with natural multiple births, this gives a much higher risk of complications, like miscarriage and stillbirth. Something else to be aware of is that some people are against IVF in general, because it often results in unused embryos that are eventually destroyed, even though they had the potential for human life. So some people think the whole process is unethical. Now, the last thing I want to mention is that recent advances in microscope technologies have not only improved the success rate of IVF, but they've also allowed us to remove single cells from the embryo so that we can do genetic tests on them and see if they have any diseases. We could also use this to find out characteristics of the future baby though, such as their gender, or their eye colour. So some people fear that it might lead to designer babies, where we pick the ones that we like most. This doesn't currently happen though, because at the moment it's illegal in the UK and in pretty much all other countries. And that's it for today. So we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a like, and we'll see you next time.